Welcome to Livery Ball and welcome to a very special car, BMW's M5 Competition. This one is fully loaded, so I'll take you to the car. Full bars and Wilkins, 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. We'll talk about the power and talk a little bit later on in the video. But I just want to take you guys quickly around the car and then while I'm inside the car, I'll take you guys further inside the car. But I don't want to do it now because I want to keep this first section as short as possible. So, facelift. You've got narrower headlights. Slightly bigger air dams, a revised front bumper, new design grills, they are still huge uh, for a BMW. And then you've also got the uh, um, carbon ceramic brakes in the competition model, which you can see over here. Uh, a duct here, this brings, uh, takes the amount of airflow here in the wheel arch and pulls it here out around the car. Competition, so carbon fiber roof. My cameraman's probably going to come around the tree here. Because, oh, it's coming through there, it's daring. And you've got this lovely color paint, but I mean, look at the way this car looks. 20 inch wheels, revised 20 inch wheels, uh, narrower rear tail lights as well. And this one is fitted with the M Performance exhaust. So it is stupid loud. But yeah, a quick tour around the car, but I know you guys all want to know what this thing drives like. So let's get it on the road and see how it drives. Yo, I think it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds excellent. Right guys, um, the aircon's gonna be on. I'm gonna try and turn it down so it doesn't make too much noise. Let me just see weekly. So we have to go sync. We have to go 22. Okay, right guys, you hear a bit of aircon. I've deaten. I have the fans be turned down as much as I can. So if we hear a bit more noise, I'm so sorry for all the noise that is on the manual. You know what? I can actually adjust the fan speed. So let's go 16. How do I adjust the fan speed here? So I just turn it off. There we go. Okay, so you guys, I'm not gonna hear too much fan noise now. Let me just turn the speed up a bit. Okay. Interior of BMW's M5 competition. Let's start with the sound system. You guys know I really like sound system in cars. This has both the premium Bowers and Vulcan sound and it's okay. Um, I don't know why, but I remember having M5 Comp a few years back, the, the, the non facelift of this is the LCI. And I was very impressed with Bowers and Vulcans at the time. But I think that's because I didn't get to hear a, a lot of other car sound systems. Recently I've sampled the BNO in the Audi RS Q8. It was the highest end BNO. I've heard Bowers and Vulcans in the Volvo. And this definitely isn't the best implementation of Bowers and Wilkins. I must admit the Harman Kardon sounds better and that is not a good thing. Um, I mean you're paying extra for the for the BMW badge. I do think the sound should be better. It's even got the diamond tweeter but it's just not doing it for me. Bass as well, just it's, it's, it's a bit disappointing. 
Further on, this car has the comfort seat option. These seats are marvelous. And when I say marvelous, I mean uber comfortable. They support you really well. They've got side bolsters in the the um, backrest of the car, of the, of the seat. And they've got good bolstering by your legs as well. Um, my videographer, he's got a bit bigger bowl than me. Actually, quite a bit bigger bowl than me. And he struggles a bit in the seats because his legs pushes the the bolsters out um, of the seat but I'm okay with it because at the end of the day there's a performance car and you need to be comfortable and firmly held in the seat of the car I'm not going to say too much about the interior because you have seen my previous M5 comp video and this is just more a more driving impression and a quick walk around of the car but flipping hell guys I'm, I'm, I'm properly in awe of this thing eh? it is it's an M5 and I mean that's as good as it gets in the big German saloon car wars so yeah let's we're coming onto a bit of a straight road now I'll put my foot down a bit for you and obviously when we get to the dam I will um, put my foot down around the turns but for now I can be a bit naughty if, if for some reason this car's cracking crack and pop map I don't know if you can hear that really loud so I love that BMW is having a bit of fun with the tuning of the exhaust so like very loud we'll go for a mouthful that was big numbers like that this thing is stupid fast and it is stupid fast because it has 460 kilowatt and 750 newton meters of torque now on to other things about the m5 competition it is all-wheel drive and by all-wheel drive it can go oh let me first say our gopro on that side overheated so we don't have a forward facing camera now until it uh, cools down so that's a bit of a problem but I'll chat to you guys a bit more about the M5 competition and its engine so 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 it is a hot V that means the turbo sit in between the V as you guys know what these hot V's you've got charge cooling so the intercoolers are fed by water and that cools the temperature of the air as it comes into the engine uh, the other thing with the M5 competition is you've got a diff cool at the back full electronic locking diff four wheel drive that you can make rear wheel drive and these M1 and M2 buttons on the serial that lets you configure the entire car um, it is really impressive but this road is a bit rough here so as soon as we get to the dam I'll chat you guys a bit more through the corners hopefully by then the phone is uh, cool and we can get a forward facing view for you Right, M1 mode, we're going to see how the car takes some corners, good lord, guys I'm not going to go too hot, I've got a substantial headache, so my camera, I actually can't do this car, I don't understand how performance like this is usable, that's full. Ridiculous guys. Don't want to go too hot there. My cop is clomping today. Fourth. Yo, just doesn't stop. I'm actually feeling a bit beaten now that I'm pushing the car through corners. Okay, this is next level. Next, next level. So BMW has essentially done a lot to the car's chassis in order to get the car to turn in a bit better no communication through the steering wheel from what I could feel the carbon ceramic brakes bite really nicely overall the car feels lovely through the corners however even though it's a competition with the carbon fiber roof and all the other options it still weighs over two tons and 
it's not masking it that well. I can feel the inertia through the corner. Doesn't mean it's not making the car fun. It just means it's making the car feel a bit heavier than expected. Nevertheless, a weapon to be reckoned to be what, reckoned with. This thing is stupid fast. Stupid fast. Do I like it though? Is the question over the E sixty three S, which I had a few weeks ago, that the indicator stopped working, and all that stuff. No, I think the E63S feels a bit more fun. I think the gearbox on the E63S is a bit crisper. I also think that overall the E63S just had a bit more fun to it. Yes, the E-Class is a Mercedes and I'm not being biased. I just think the Mercedes got a bit more bite, man. You know, when you pull the gear change on the Mercedes, a nice snap from the gearbox. The 4-liter twin turbo V8 was slightly more like aggressive than this car but overall i am very impressed here with what bmw has done let's get some outside shots and then run to our conclusion Conclude, but first, to conclude, I like this car, I think it is phenomenal at its current asking price of oh, this thing's pushing 2.5 bar, probably nudging 3 bar. When I say bar, I mean 3 million. Um, it's a crap ton of money and I think the E63S is just so expensive it's getting difficult nowadays to, to talk value when it comes to such a high performance vehicle the thing is is that in a few years time a car like this isn't going to exist anymore the rules and regulations around owning a heavy on fuel car is going to die and it's gonna die, it's gonna live on for a very long time. This car emptied its tank, right? That's got a plus 80 liter fuel tank. Emptied its tank in like 440 kilometers. So the fuel consumption is not very good, obviously. It's got 460 kilowatt, you can't expect good fuel consumption. And if you buy such a car and complain about fuel consumption, that's silly, you should have then bought something else. Fuel consumption should not be on your mind when you buy such a vehicle because you can afford such a car that means you can afford the fuel consumption um is the guy standing in the middle of the road on a corner i just want to see if it's safe to pass i don't know if they drunk or something they're taking photos oh they're teaching how to drive it's nice road they teach you how to drive on but so far the if Oh, or almost an F10, the F90 LCI facelift is a very good car. The 8-speed ZF is phenomenal. There's gear show ferocity on the gear lever. It's just a very fun car. I like the BMW had some fun here and wasn't very boring. Uh, it's got autonomous driving as well, like really good. I'm really impressed with the way it self-drives. Very, very smooth on the throttle and pulls away with absolute, absolute effortlessness. Oh, let's get across here. And that's my final thoughts on BMW's M5. Buy it while you can. Cars like this, again, aren't going to be on the planet for very long if you can afford it. And if you can afford to buy this car, I'm super jealous because it is a phenomenal piece of engineering. 
and I am smitten by it. I just wish the pies and workers was better and I also wish that this one had the massaging seats because the massaging seats are really good in uh, this car. So thank you all so much for watching uh, the video. Be free, be you. Live a rebel. Out.